What's up everybody? This is Flash001 USA. It's Sunday, October 19th, 2013. It's around 3 p.m. here. Now this video is going to be about electronic stuff and in particular one of my favorite hobbies which is radios. And what I'm going to cover is radios, antennas, and stand of wave and some of the issues that you may come across. Now I do live way out in the country and because of that I do have a base station set up at the house. I also have a mobile set up for the vehicle and I'm going to show you what I got right now. I've got a 50-foot telescope mass, and on top of this, I've got an IMAX 2000, which is a great omnidirectional antenna. I've talked all over the world on this thing. Now, at its highest point, it's 70 feet up in the air, and it's a great lightning rod, and I'll tell you a story about that before I end this video here. Okay, I also have about 40 feet up, or about four sections up on this antenna, a four-wavelength long wire antenna, and I'm going to zoom in on the loading coil for it. And you can see I got a wire that runs all the way across the yard. It's very, very long. It goes all the way out to the woods out here and ties off to an insulator. And for safety features, because of the lightning story I'll share with you here in a second, I've got this thing grounded all over the place. I've got a major ground right here, and this wire that's coming off my foot's at runs to the pole. I also have another wire that runs up that goes to the wire for the coax right here. And of course, I've got this set up the way with this U-shape to keep water from getting in anything. I'm also grounded because the pole is grounded and it's steel anyhow. All my guy wires, which are definitely steel, so I've, I'm grounded all the way around on this thing. And um, my antenna cable runs underground. Where I'm walking right here. And it pops back up at the corner of the house. And then it goes into the house, and then I've got another ground wire here. And of course, where the antenna wire comes up to go inside of the room, the radio room, I've got another piece of copper pipe shoved into the ground, very deep into the ground, and I've got another wire. So I'm grounded um, at the radio, grounded here, and I'm grounded at the antenna. And the reason I was doing this is I'll tell you the funny story here, which it wasn't funny when it happened. I was woke up, I don't know, about 4 o'clock in the morning one morning with what sounded like World War III happened here at the house. And I think some of y'all are going to know where I'm fixing to take this little story. And I had the ground out here, but I didn't have the extra grounds here. So I immediately disconnected the wire going to the radio, unplugged everything. And I'm, I'm not joking to this. The very second that I got that everything disconnected in the house, my antenna outside took a direct hit. And this was a major electrical storm. I'm going to tell you right now that I couldn't find enough fiberglass out here to make a toothpick with. So that was a lesson learned because it did get some damage in the house, but it wasn't nothing that was going to, you know, break the bank. But it was just more of an aggravation thing. So because of that, I turned around and got all these safety grounds on here. And if I see a storm coming up, I disconnect the antenna, shut off the radio. And, of course, I'm grounded in the house, so... It puts a good bit of safety and puts peace of mind into the mix with it. Oh, by the way, the way I raise that long wire antenna up and down is, I should have showed you this a second ago, i got a pulley system here. And just like a clothesline pulley. So all I have to do is take that and raise it and lower it, just like a flag. So that's actually pretty cool. But this isn't what the video is about. Mainly, it's going to be about issues that you'll see with stand and wave. Now, I'm going to tell you something that... When you get these antennas like the IMAX 2000s or the Antron 99s, they're well behaved. And as long as you're smart about putting them up and setting them up, you're always going to get a good stand of wave, even without that much tuning, as long as you follow simple guidelines. Vehicles, on the other hand, it's a different story, man. You can wind up with all sorts of crud and never get them right. And I've done a lot of repairs on stuff like this in the past, and I'm going to tell you right now, I've had everything that you could find go wrong with stuff when it comes to mobiles. And I decided, hey, I wanted to go ahead and upgrade the system in my vehicle here, which is what I did yesterday and I'm finished up today. So I went ahead and got me a nice stand, a three magnet stand for my antenna. This way I'm not worried about blowing off in the wind. And this thing is one good talking radio. But in the past I had issues with the first radio that I had in here, which every now and then my standing wave would jump up and down. And um, I'd go over here, check it. It was great, but as soon as I'm riding down the road, I'd have vibration issues. And it took me a while to figure out what was going on. But if you've got any kind of ground loops or anything that's uh, missing the mark on your standing wave, you know, you, you can go in circles trying to figure out what's going on. And you can chase it around and around. 
and basically I decided to go ahead and replace everything on the truck here in one swoop and get it right again which is what I did and I found my problem of course I found it a while back I was just lazy and never got around to fixing it but I'm going to show you something here okay um, I used two meters when I check standard wave first of all the, I got an old radio here that's it's just a base station. I don't even use it. It sets in the house and it's a backup base station. But it's got an internal standard wave meter on it and it's great. Now, when I was first setting up this radio, when I had issues with it, I would come in here and I'd set the standard wave up. And I mean, this antenna's broadbanded. I can go all the way down to 2600, all the way to 2800 and have a very acceptable standard wave on it. Well, I would set this thing up and get it all going. And then I would notice that um, I would have issues like, hey, sometimes the radio would, wouldn't be receiving as good. I thought, okay, I got a loose connection somewhere. Nope, wasn't the deal. No, no connectors were bad. And or I run a little power amp on my radio, which I'm going to show you what I got right now. This is what I normally use for my mobile, say MFM. And um, because I'm always on the highway and I'm always out in the boondocks, to me this is heaven sent. And this thing has saved my butt more times than I can tell you. So I got to have the setup and I also need the power just because I'm not in no city or anything. So with that said, um, every now and then I would turn the amp on and the mic would burn me where I feel the heat on it. I knew what that was. I knew immediately it was a ground loop. That was RF bouncing everywhere in the vehicle. And if you got a ground loop, what will happen is, is, I'll show you right here, the coax like this starts becoming the antenna. So you start losing the lobe and losing the director power that's supposed to deliver here, and instead it's just splattering everything else. Plus, if it's bad enough, you can actually hurt the electronics in the, in the vehicle. You can possibly damage a computer. So to make a long story short, I've learned a long time ago there's a quick down and dirty way to check. All you have to do is use two standard wave meters. Use one by itself or use a radio that's got a standard wave meter. And then if you put something else in line with that coax and things change, You've got a ground loop somewhere. You've got a, something that's giving you a fit, and you better fix it. If not, you're going to wind up with more issues than solutions. Now, a lot of guys, and I totally disagree with this, are like, oh, yeah, you know, they'll, they'll go out there and, and, and roll up 20 feet of coax cable and drop it in the trunk. And let me tell you, all they're doing is making a big capacitor. They're getting, um, they're basically getting, I guess, the, the inductance capacitance or whatever between the steel of the vehicle and that coil of wire. So they're basically partially eliminating some of that ground loop, but that's not really the way to fix it. And I'm going to show you a surefire way to fix it here too. First thing we want to do is let's look at the radio frequency where I'm at. Okay, now let's look at the standard wave for that frequency. Just a little bit above 1.2. And let's look at the big meter up here, see what it says about 1.1. So they pretty much agree with each other because meters are like pocket watches. No two meters are going to be exactly the same, so there's going to be always a little bit of a difference. But if you see major things going on, then you know you've probably got issues. And now let's bump up. We're going to bump up uh, to another band here. All right, I'm at the 11 meter band, and I'm at channel one. Let's take a look at the frequency. Now let's look at the standard wave again. See the needle's not even moving. I'm just barely bumping. And we'll look at the big meter here. Not even moving. I'm keying up, unkeyed, keyed, unkeyed. I'm going to take it to channel 40. And let's look at the meter over here. Once again, it's just not even moving, just barely bumping. Now let's look at the big meter. Keyed up, unkeyed. Keyed up, unkeyed. Now let's take it up to a high band here. Let's take it to 278550. Okay, now let's look at the meter. About a 1.2. And look over here. Uh, about a 1.4, 1.3. It's kind of hard to see here. It looks more like a 1. Yeah, it's about a 1.3. Okay. Now I'm going to introduce the problem that I had, and I'm going to put the ground loop in it. And this is a temporary fix that I've got right here, so... Pull him off and put the uglies into it. Now we're going to go back to those bands we're at here. So give me a second to. Okay. 
All right, now that I've introduced the problem in here, I'm going to show you what it means to have ground loops. I'm going to key the radio up, and I'm going to physically take my hand and grab a hold of the wire. Okay, just reach down here and grab a hold of it. I want you to see what happens here. That's just me touching the wire. Now I'm going to touch it to the ground. Now let's take a listen to the received noise when I'm doing this. Ready? Hear it pick up? It's on? It's off. Okay, that's what happens when you have ground loop issues. And if you ever see this, I've had people call me up before and say, hey, look, I installed a radio into the vehicle and it talks great, but as soon as I turn an amplifier on, it sounds like uh, I'm talking into a paper cup. Or, hey man, the microphone's burning me when I'm keying up if they have people that run power or whatnot. And nine times out of ten, it's either because I got a vehicle that's not made out of steel, it's got loads of fiberglass, and that's fixable too with, with reflective tape. But then you have people that have the issues that I have with this truck, because this truck's not made out of fiberglass. And what I had is a ground loop. And the way I got rid of it was I went down here and I sliced the cable. And I put me some end connectors on it and a splice barrel. And right now I'm temporarily tied in with a piece of copper wire to this bolt down here that's on the seat belt. But eventually I'm going to make me a steel brace to hold this up. But I just wanted to show this to you because I've seen people get caught with this. I've seen people ruin antennas, just trimming the crap out of them. You know, trying to get the stand away and they're like, can't understand what's going on. And they waste an antenna and have to go get a new piece of stainless steel rod for it. So let this be a lesson right here for some of you guys after to play with, with the radios and stuff. And I'm going to tell you something. The lower the power you run, the more you can get away with. But when you start running more power, or if you start adding things in line with the radio, like a frequency counter or a power meter, etc., stuff like that, then you'll realize that you've got issues with it. Because if you've got any kind of stand wave or any kind of you know ground loops, whatever going on with your wiring in the system, you're going to see it. And the more power you push, the worse it's going to get. So there you go. Like I said, today's been upgrade day for me. I went and actually got me a good power cancel of mic for this mobile over here. So I'm real happy with this one. And um, definitely talks clear. So I'm happy with this. I've already had it out driving up the road and talked to some people on it. But there you go. I just wanted to share this with you. Because you never know. Like I said, I've seen people chase this before. And I've just figured this may help some people. Now, one more thing, too. Somewhere along the line, I'm going to be covering my long wire antenna. And I think you guys are going to be extremely surprised with how I've got this thing set up. I've got a non-reactance coil set up on this thing, basically. I'm just going to spill the beans out here a little bit. Um, the IMAX 2000s, the antenna that I've got up right here, this thing has a ferocious bandwidth. And I mean ferocious. It's got great ears. I can take this antenna all the way down to 2600 megahertz all the way to 2800 megahertz, all the way anywhere I want to within those bands. And it doesn't matter how much power you push into it, the reflection stays true whether the power's in it or not. Okay, and a lot of times when you see coils on antennas, when they wind coils for them, they wind up with reactants and that's, you get stray capacitance, stray inductance, and that causes the antenna to have a, either be narrow banded or you have a problems trying to get your standard wave down on certain frequencies. And the IMAX 2000 uses a caduceus coil inside of it, or a canceling coil, where they wind, uh, the inner winding of the coil is wound clockwise, the outer winding is, is set up counterclockwise over that. And what you do is you get, the, uh, you get all the benefits of a coil, and I know this doesn't make sense, but you get the benefits of the coil, but it cancels, it's, it cancels out the inductance all at the same time too. So it allows you to have a good antenna that's got a wide bandwidth. Well, I, when my IMAX got hit by lightning, going back to that story right there, the only thing that was left was that coil. It didn't, it didn't burn it up. It just spit it out on the ground. And um, I got to looking at it. I was like, oh, this is how these guys did this. Because I've ran Mako V5.8s. I've ran all sorts of stuff with gamma matches, anything you can imagine. I've played with it. So basically what happened was I got to look at this and then I did some research on it and found, hey, look, I found a website that called uh, IMAX 2000 Exposed. 
and you can Google that, and they show you. And I was like, hey, man, that's exactly what they're doing. So basically, I made my own loading coil. I, I copied what they had in there. Now, keep in mind, because this is a long wire antenna, uh, it, needs, it needs to have about a 450-ohm impedance on it or match on it to, to match a long wire. And I, what I did is I sat that, I wound the coil up, and I loaded it down with, with carbon resistors and played around with the windings until I got it exactly where I wanted it. And I brought it out here, and I'm going to tell you right now, I've talked all over the world on this thing, on this long wire. Right, The way I've got it set up right now, I've got it set up where, where, um, where most of the lobe hits towards Europe and hits uh, just you know back and forth that way right there. So I've got it set up so that I can pretty much talk overseas with it. And it's like I said, it's a play toy. And I'll zoom back in on it one more time. I've tried everything, guys. I've tried all sorts of different setups for long wire antenna. And, um, you know, I've used toroid cores and did it that way right there where you wind a toroid to get your, um, your match on it like that. Nothing touches that. Nothing touches this guy right here. So somewhere along the line, I'm going to dedicate a little video to this and let you guys see how well this works. But that's down the road right there. Mainly, I just kind of wanted to cover the thing with the vehicle because, like I said, I see people cuss and throw wrenches over a vehicle trying to get standard wave on it correct so there you go and for you guys that play radios i hope you find this useful if you want to leave me something on the blog and i'll get back at you so on that note you guys have a good weekend bye bye